Hey, good morning, everybody. What a beautiful day today is uh, over here in Tampa Bay. Uh, it's just gorgeous. Um, quite a few clouds in the sky, but they're they're, uh, they're beautiful clouds. Uh, some of it does appear to be chemtrails, but uh, some of it is obviously not. Um, so, if you've watched some of my videos on chemtrails, uh, you know, purported chemtrails, because I don't know, I don't know with certainty what is and what isn't, but uh, there certainly are some uh, curiosities, and then, you know, when you look at uh, exhaust coming out of the back of planes, and then the exhaust persists for six, eight, ten hours, and then, uh, it's not really exhaust, but it's, some, it's something coming out of the back of the planes, whatever it is. They want us to call it contrails, obviously, uh, but uh, I, you know, I can't see contrails persisting for eight, ten hours, maybe, I mean, who knows, even possibly days, you know, um, but definitely eight or ten hours, and then as they persist, they expand to, you know, ten, twenty, hundred times their original size, so there's no way that that's water vapor created by the uh, temperature difference of the plane's uh, body and the surrounding air or whatever contrails are created by, you know, there's no way, I mean, that doesn't make it, and no rational person would agree that that's, that that's contrails, you know, and it does appear that whatever it is does persist for days because you'll see them uh, spraying the sky and then, uh, you know, it just turned, it goes from being a, a contrail looking trail to uh, what appears to be a cloud, it's not a cloud, but whatever it is, I mean, it is a cloud, but it's a, it's a manufactured cloud, it's a chemical cloud, uh, and then it just, it just turns into like a blanket, basically, like a fog or pollution blanket, it's the entire sky is just hazed with it, um, you know, and it, uh, it appears to be that in the morning, uh, the haze settles, so when you look at the sky, sometimes it's like, it's like kind of like a bowl where it's, it's open, uh, you know, uh, directly above you and then maybe out to, every day is different, but let's just say, for example, out to uh, 40 degrees from the ground, you know, it's, it's open, it's blue sky, and then there's that haze from that point to the ground, so it's like you're inside of a bowl looking out, but then uh, as the sun hits it, as the sun comes up over the horizon and, and hits it, uh, it, it appears to heat up and then rise up into the sky, I mean, I don't know, I mean, it's all... It's all conjecture, but, uh, you know, you, you do have people like David Keith uh, going on the uh, Stephen Colbert show and Al Gore going on the uh, Ellen DeGeneres show, and they're talking about this stuff. They call it geoengineering. Obviously, they have a fancy word for it because they love fancy words because they know that people are mesmerized by uh, multi... What I, what I... The phrase that I've coined to describe it is multi-syllabic gibberish, you know? It's like... Uh, it's like... Uh, Magical incantations, you know. Magical incantations are, uh, wit you know, or, uh, witchcraft, whatever you want to call it. Uh, magical incantations are like uh, ritualized. This practice, ritualized, you know. So, uh, like you go to church and you you give in the offering. You go to church. You exp you're taught to express kindness to your fellow children. That's like ritualized goodness. Uh, these incantations are ritualized deception, ritualized hypnosis, ritualized mind control. So you learn how to do this in the real world uh, without it being, uh, without it having the clothing of, uh, of uh, occultic ritual basically, but it's, it's, it's all, it's the same thing, you know, it, it's, it's like, it's like a, a mirror image, it's like the, uh, Catholic Church versus the Illuminati, they're exactly the same, they're just inversions of each other, you know, one's on the side of the light, one's on the side of the, the darkness, one, uh, points up, one points down, one is, uh, open, uh, and, uh, transparent, one is secret, um, you know, and, uh, whatever the opposite of not transparent is, what, what would that be? What would we call that? Opaque, maybe? Or cloaked, you know? Um, one is good, one is evil. Um, and obviously, uh, the 
the the one the e the dark the evil one the dark one is always trying to infiltrate the good one so you you get it gets very confusing it gets you know you, you get uh, ambiguity you get uh, corruption you get you know even on the side of the light right but by the same token the good infiltrates the bad too because it's very difficult just like it's very hard to be pure good it's also very hard to be pure evil so their infiltration occurs on both sides and you know so it's a it's a war basically it's a, it's a spiritual war um, and in every war both sides are infiltrated by both sides. I mean, that's a, that's a strategy of war, you know. So, speaking of which, uh, I want to make this video about uh, conspiracies, and I'm going to uh, run some, do some uh, exercise with a friend, so I have to go fast. So I'm trying to make shorter videos, which is very difficult for me because I like to talk. Uh, so this will kind of force my hand in that respect, but. Uh, I want to talk about uh, the idea, the very seductive idea, that it's impossible to maintain a secret with a large group of people. An example of which would be like, for example, the uh, heliocentric uh, model. The idea is, or the, the, the common objection is, well, how can you fool hundreds of thousands of people, you know? hundreds of thousands of engineers, hundreds of thousands of scientists. Uh, you know, there's that one. There's the uh, conspiracies about FEMA camps. There's conspiracies about uh, cancer-causing viruses uh, being uh, clandestinely put into uh, vaccines and other types of medications. Um, uh, there's, uh, there's, you know, there's hundreds, there's thousands of these uh, conspiracy theories. I'm not saying that they're all true. Obviously, they're not all true, even the ones that are true. Uh, they're not necessarily true in the way that they're presented. They're just, they're just, you know, I mean, a conspiracy by definition is something that's secret, right? So if everybody knows about it, well, then it's not secret and it, therefore it's not a conspiracy. Um, now, if it's, so, so it is by definition and it's a given that it's secret. Now, if it's secret, that means if it is known, it's probably not known either A, completely or B, uh, accurately and certainly not completely accurately but one of my my conviction uh, about mankind is that uh, we live our lives on a need-to-know basis so we're given the information that we need to know to do what we're supposed to do um, and this again applies to whether you're on the side of the light or the side of the dark nobody has the full plan you know that you, you, you just you, you just don't a lot of people think they do, and that's a form of darkness within a person's mind and heart and soul when they uh, are seduced into this spirit or into this attitude, you know, like they think they know everything or like they have the answer or no. It's like, no, 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 nobody has the answer. Everybody just has what they need to know to do what they need to do at any given point in time. And that's it. And, and no more. I mean, what, what would be the point of giving somebody more than they need to do need to know to do what they need to do? There, there would be no point to that, you know, um, except pride and ego, basically. So, um, now I'm about to, I, get, I need to uh, make sure I don't miss my exit here. I think I might have already missed it because it appears that I'm going the wrong way. No, I'm still okay. All right. Um, so the question is, how can hundreds of thousands... Okay, so the thing I just want to... The idea I want to propose is that, uh, first of all, all great conspiracies do not succeed. Some fail. Some are busted. I would suggest that probably most of them are busted. Uh, but occasionally one does succeed. It's just like everything else. You know, open 100 restaurants... 20 succeed, 80 fail, you know, I mean, it's just like anything, any business, any career, uh, I saw a statistic the other day that said 25% of people that sign up for college finish college, so, I mean, <clears throat> you know, there's nothing in life that's 100%, I don't care what it is, you know, uh, no pursuit, no uh, program, no, any, no anything, I mean, it's just, it's just not, I mean, you, you, uh, you get a job. I mean, there's there's no guarantee that that 
you're going to be a fit for that job. That job's going to be a fit for you. Everything's going to go well. It's going to start well, continue well, and end well. I mean, there's just there's just no no guarantee, you know. So uh, these uh, great conspiracies, a lot of them are busted. Uh, John F. Kennedy had an interesting uh, take on this in his speech. Uh, I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard that he was executed uh, seven days after he gave this speech. It's, it's known as the Secret Society speech. You can look it up for yourself on YouTube. Find it a thousand times on YouTube. But uh, he says that there is a there is a secret plan to enslave every man, woman, and child. I believe he said in America. I don't think he said in the world. I think he said in America. Uh, and he said he was going to stop it. And he talked about these people having vast financial, um, social, military, intellectual resources. And he said that he was going to stop it. And, and like I said, I think uh, I heard that he was executed seven days after giving that speech. So, um, They say that Trump is the second JFK, by the way, except he's just older and wiser. Uh, I, I don't think that JFK realized the depth and the gravity of the threat that he was facing, you know, that's my take on it, but, uh, so there is this secretive plot, um, and the thing of it is, is that this has happened a hundred times in history, the thing that I always think about is, uh, Mao Zedong, right, purportedly killed uh, you know, up to a hundred million. I, I think a lot of people say, I've heard 20 million, I've heard 60 million, I've heard a hundred million, you know, whatever it is. He killed a lot of people, his own people, his own, I, I could get off on a rant about that because in America, there's this giant red herring about racism, about white people are evil. You know, the greatest atrocities have almost, not always, but almost been people killing their own people. You know, it's not like the greatest evil in the world is people hating people that aren't like them. No, it's, no, 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 no. It's almost always the wealthy against the poor, almost. And it doesn't matter if it's wealthy Chinese against poor Chinese, or wealthy Germans against wealthy German, I mean, poor Germans, or wealthy Africans against poor Africans, or wealthy Cubans against poor Cubans, or, you know, <laughs> it's, it's nothing, it's none of that. It's none of this, I don't like you because you ain't like me. I mean, that is evil, and that is an evil in the world, and that has... Uh, produced some great atrocities. Uh, Cecil B. Rhodes, uh, among the greatest, uh, you know, he's the eponym for the epon for the eponymous uh, Rhodes Scholarship. You know, Bill Clinton and Al Gore were lauded because they were both Rhodes Scholar. Well, Cecil B. Rhodes was the uh, he killed more people than uh, Adolf Hitler, and uh, they were all black because they were Africans. Right? He was down in Africa starting diamond mines. If I'm not mistaken, Cecil B. Rhodes is the founder of the uh, uh, Beers, is it Beers? Uh, diamond uh, uh, industry or uh, empire, you know? So I think it's Beers. I'm having a, a mental block about that right now. But uh, So, I mean, it's a crazy, it's a crazy conspiratorial world that we live in. The Bible talks about conspiracies, and it doesn't condemn conspiracies. This whole notion that conspiracies are laughable, just all anybody has to do is say the word conspiracy, and, and automatically they win the argument, or they silence all. It's like, it's stupid. It's stupidity, and where it comes out of is it comes out of institutionalized education. Like, so many things that come out of the institutions are just pure, uh, you know, pure, uh, purified, like 200 proof alcohol, pure stupidity, you know, but they push it on people in a systematic and an industrialized and an institutionalized way that people are bloated with this pride and ego, like they're so smart if they just say the word conspiracy, I said the word conspiracy, <laughs> I win the argument, <laughs> it's like, that doesn't win any argument, you just make yourself look like an idiot. Uh, <laughs> You know, you and your 10,000 friends, you all look like idiots because you think you say one little word and you accomplish something. It doesn't accomplish anything, you know? Uh, but you think about Zedong. He killed, like, between 20 and 100 million Chinese, you know? Now, just think about that. I mean, Zedong wasn't out there with a baseball bat with nails uh, jammed into the end of it, hitting people over, hitting Chinese people. No, he had, a, he had an institutionalized, industrialized process of uh, 
killing people, you know? And uh, so there was a lot of people involved, a lot, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions possibly, but definitely hundreds of thousands. The same thing with the, uh, the same thing with, uh, you know, the Nazis, obviously. Uh, and the list just goes on and on. Castro in Cuba, uh, Pol Pot in uh, Cambodia, you know. And these are just what? This is just like three or four examples. There's probably been hundreds, if not every great atrocity in history has been some vast conspiracy of vast numbers of people keeping secrets, going up against their own fellow citizens and their own fellow uh, members of the same race and uh, their own fellow uh, gender their own fellows, you know, same sexual orientation, same, 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 same. Like 95% of all the great atrocities in history have been people of the same basic uh, identifiable traits doing something to other people of the same uh, of basic identifiable traits that they all share together. Uh, the, the difference being, most often being either one, uh, socioeconomic class or ideology. You know, and I don't know why the lighting has just got so weird in here. I'm parked inside of a garage. Anyway, I'm all washed out. But uh, so this 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 idea that hundreds of thousands of people cannot be uh, participating in a conspiracy together—that it's impossible to keep something that big of a secret—it just doesn't hold up to uh, historical analysis because. This has happened over and over and over again throughout history. And I think it goes down, I think it goes down something like this. Somebody said one time that it's impossible to convince somebody that something is a lie when when their paycheck relies on the, them believing. Uh, I'll change the angle or something. Maybe it won't be so crazy washed out. When, when their paycheck relies upon them uh, believing the lie, okay? I think that is has a lot to do with how you accomplish a vast conspiracy involving huge numbers of people. Obviously, there's the uh, socioeconomic reliance, dependency, you know, and it's not like, welfare dependency. It's like, you know, your home, your lifestyle, your kids, fam college educations, your family, everything relies on you believing the lie. You know, if you decide to go, go against the lie, then all of that has to be sacrificed. And 96, 92, 87, I don't know what the percentage is, but a large percentage of people will choose to believe a lie, to promote a lie, to advocate for a lie, to defend a lie, if it means they get to keep their lifestyle, you know? And uh, I think it was Napoleon's that said that there are two ways to motivate, motivate a man. One is reward, and the other is punishment, right? So if you can construct a lie that provides people with reward, like think about NASA engineers, they get a paycheck, they get status, they get respect, they get yada, yada, yada. And then on the one hand, and then on the other hand, also there's an implied threat. You know, uh, you get all this if you go with us. And if you don't, you get shunned. You get, you're going to be looking at divorce. You're going to be looking at poverty. You're going to be looking at social ostracism. I can never say that word. You're going to be socially ostracized. Um, you're going to be humiliated, you know, and you're going to have a horrible, miserable life, you know. And if you're high enough up in the power structure and you go against the plan, well, you know, you might, you might uh, have an unfortunate accident while you're out canoeing, you know, <laughs> or driving down the interstate or, or sleeping or, you know, who knows, whatever. Um, and that's, that's the way it goes. I mean, they, uh, there's, there's theories and there's uh, ideas out here that there were several astronauts that were killed in uh, explosions because, uh, you know, they were questioning uh, things and, uh, you know, that's the compartmentalization. That's the idea of staying in your own channel, 
you know. Uh, that's the idea of everybody having enough information to do what they need to do and no more, you know. So there's a there's a light side and a dark side to that. The light side is you just need to know you just know what you need to know in order to do good. On the light side, on the dark side, it's more of a matter of you know what you need to know to do what you're supposed to do and don't ask any questions, you know. Just don't ask any because if you do, you're going to get in trouble, you know, and you might get in big trouble. You might be in mortal trouble, you know, so it's, there's a light side and a dark side to that, that concept as well. So anyway, uh, the whole point of this is to supposed to affirm the fact that giant conspiracies very well are possible. They don't always succeed. Uh, but once you get a nucleus of, say, 100 people going along with it and uh, you put billions of dollars under their control, well, they can create an industry. They can create... Uh, I have to... I squint all the time these days. They can create an industry. They can create a culture. Uh, they can create opportunities for people. And then once people avail themselves of the opportunity, now there's that Napoleonic... Uh, principle of of of, uh, of reward and uh, punishment, right? So now they're they're kind of in a between a rock and a hard place if they want to walk away from the opportunity. I mean, uh, theoretically, theoretically they can, but the point is, you know, they can they can walk away from go pursue another opportunity. But the point being is that uh, if they find something wrong, you know, they have to walk away. They have one option when it comes to walking away, and that is you walk away quietly, right? Because if you don't walk away quietly, uh, then, uh, man, that glare really bothers me. I don't know why. But uh, the glare on my face, it really bothers me. It's because I'm facing the sun. I'm like, behind me is darkness and in front of me is sun. That's why. So, anyway, um, that's it. Uh, every giant conspiracy has conspiracies have occurred throughout history. They've occurred successfully. People just take for granted, oh, uh, well, you know... Uh, <clears throat> Zedong was exposed. Hitler was exposed. It's like, yeah, but it, we're talking 2020 vision here. We're talking hindsight. There were people who literally lost their lives. There were entire generations of people subjected to their brutality and their their lives. You know, they just uh, before they were exposed. So the idea is to not allow them to victimize anybody. You know, so that they don't have to be found out. That that's the idea. So I think we have to keep our eye open for conspiracies because they do have a very long-standing, long-running historical precedence. And or is, I can never miss it. Precedence or precedent? I can never remember which one it is. But anyway, one of those words. Um, I'm going to go with precedence. They do have a. So we have to keep an eye out. We have to be sharp. We can't. We can't allow ourselves to be psychologically and socially controlled by a stupid little word or a stupid little phrase. Conspiracy theories. Oh, conspiracy. I mean, this is pathetic. I mean, that's pathetic to be controlled by a word. I'm not going to be backed into a corner by a word. I'm just going to look at you and feel sorry for you that you're so intellectually broken that you actually think a word is an argument, you know? Uh, that a phrase is... No, you, you have to use your mind. You can't just regurgitate words like... A cat regurgitates a hairball, you know? Use your mind and think, you know? So uh, that's it for today. God bless you. And if you listened, thank you. And I'm sorry it wasn't short. I failed in that respect. Bye.